Hi, my name is Steve Latvis. I'm an induction heating application specialist with Miller Electric. Today we're showcasing the ProHeat 35 and the various applications that we can do with one power source. It's 35 kilowatts. What we have here is our ProHeat 35, 35 kilowatt induction heating system. And today we're going to talk about all the various applications that we get involved with with one complete system. What you see here is the power source along with a digital recorder, which we often need to document temperature profiles in many applications. We have a display panel showing temperatures that we're, that we're uh, heating up to, as well as a control panel that will allow us to do preheat applications, post well heat treat, hydrogen bake out, and shrink fit applications. We can control the heating rates, the soak times, and the cooling rates to follow any procedure that we run into. The other two accessories that you see on the front of the machine go with our new rolling inductor, and it is an air filter regulator along with some temperature feedback to the machine so that we can control power to that new accessory. We're here to showcase all the various applications that we can do with one system. In this setup right here, I have an air-cooled induction heating blanket that is designed specifically for large and small pipe diameters and flat plates. It has the coil built into it and it is capable of going up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. In this application over here, we have a rolling inductor. This will allow us to heat something that's moving, whether it's rotating like it would be on this pipe, or if this was attached to a gantry such as a subarc application where the rolling inductor and the subarc is, is moving relative to a stationary plate, let's say. This feature right here is an infrared sensor that allows us to monitor temperatures of the steel, feed that back to the machine, and then control the machine output so that uh, we're, we're maintaining the temperature that we desired. We found a sensor that is accurate to plus or minus 25 degrees for all emissivities of steel, shiny and dull finish. So that was an important thing. We also have a travel detection kit added to this. It, it allows the Pro Heat to have its power reduced to the coil if this movement ever slows down and will de-energize the coil if it ever comes to a stop. Over here we have a liquid cooled coil set up. This is set up for welding a, a weld that would be between the coils. The coils themselves never get hot so the welder really likes that when he's leaning up against it and there's enough space for him to weld underneath the coil as well as get a grinder in there. In the setup that we have further down here, this is for post weld heat treating. Oftentimes uh, certain alloys and certain requirements re require uh, code related post weld heat treating. We can control heating rates, soak time, cooling rates, and go up to 1425 degrees, which allows us to do post weld heat treating on nine chrome materials like P91 and P92. Um, down below here is we've got a preheat set up with a flat coil uh, which will also allow us to do post weld heat treating on seam welds on flat plate. That said, all of these options can be run on one pro heat system as long as it's set up with the cooler so we can run air cooled and liquid cooled accessories and really increase the versatility of how the machine can be used. Let's not forget we can also heat a lot of things for to maintain the temperature of a product flowing through a pipe. We can also do a lot of shrink fit applications involving removing or installing flanges, bearings, um, some collars or whatever on a shaft or a pipe. For more information on the induction heating and the ProHeat 35, go to MillerWelds.com. Mm -hmm.